So hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Fables Dan. And today I'll be talking about how to never have a writer's block or a creative block ever again. So I'm a writer, obviously I'll be mostly talking about this in the context of writing, but obviously I think this applies to all creative process. And the reason why I wanted to make this video was because I was editing my other video about writing, which was using uh, academic the using the academic writing process to sort of how you how you can translate that and apply that to you know writing a blog post or other types of content creation that's more text-based or information-based such as making a video so I talked about that and I throughout the video um, I talked about having you know dealing with writer's block and also dealing with um, what was the other thing I talked about something to do with creative block so I thought I didn't really get to say what I wanted to say uh, in that video, so I thought it would be a great video to make into a video. It would be a great idea to turn that into a video uh, just to share with you kind of my journey, my process, and my story. And I think this has been this has been a topic that I've been really I've always wanted to talk about this, I think either in the blog post or in the video. And I'm feeling kind of talked to today, so I'm just gonna free will this video and uh, you know I, I actually didn't plan this video I didn't outline it <laughs> I didn't brainstorm it as I <laughs> as I as I suggested all of you guys do but I kind of just feel inspired to make a video so this happens too sometimes you do things outside of the box <laughs> right just do whatever that feels right for you but yeah so writer's block uh, just so you know, I'm gonna be sipping my tea throughout because uh, I don't wanna, want, I don't want it to get cold. Sometimes I make make a cup of tea and then I film the video and I forget about my tea and then I drink my tea at the end and it's like completely cold and it's just gross, especially when there's cream in it. So I'm just gonna be sipping on this once in a while. Okay, so I feel like the first thing I should address uh, when it comes to writer's blocks or creative blocks is, I think difficult times do happen. Like I think there's always going to be struggle and conflicts when it comes to putting something on the page or creating something or trying to realize your vision into like physical form. I feel like there's always going to be uh, struggles with that. Like sometimes you are just too tired or too exhausted or you might be stressed out. Or you might be stressed out about something else. You might have other priorities. You might be, um, you know, I, I feel like there's always going to be things like that. So it's never going to be 100%. But I feel like uh, at least for me, after going through the process of, you know, self-discovery and going through this sort of process of finding myself as a writer, um, I feel like when it comes to writer's block, say when you get blocked, you can only function at 20-30%. But I feel like when you sort of get to that place where you're not affected by immense blocks anymore, you could fun function at like minimum 60-70% even on a difficult day. So yeah, just a disclaimer, I just want to say that there's always going to be some struggles and some challenges. Uh, that's kind of just the natural way of being an artist and creator. You know, there's always going to be challenges and the most important thing is to look at the situation and do problem solving and recognize where you're coming from and what isn't working, what is working and that kind of stuff. But yeah, so, okay, so here's, um, with that said, here's how to never get a creative blog or writer's blog ever again. So. Yeah, again, I'll be mostly talking about this in the context of writing, but feel free to translate that, translate that into your own artistic lane or sort of into your own sort of, uh, just apply that to your own creative process. So here is kind of how I did it, or here's kind of, here's my process. So the first and foremost, first and foremost, I feel like the most important thing when it comes to not having a writer's block is that, I think I mentioned this in my other video, is you should know who you are as an artist. You should know who you are as a writer. And I don't just mean like, you know what genre you're going to write in, you know what sort of style or what kind of vocabulary you like to use, what your diction is, uh, or sort of what's the general message you want to send. I think as an artist, of course, you should know all those things, but I feel like knowing yourself as a writer uh, is sort of like an extension of knowing who you are as a person. And I think that just opens a whole dimension of work <laughs> that you have to do that you have to go through when to you know to be like to not have a writer's block because I feel like not having a writer's block means you're 
authentically expressing who you are as a writer or as an artist and to come from that place of authenticity to always be coming from an honest place you have to know who you are you have to know where you're coming from you have to know the stories you want to tell so i feel like being a writer or being an artist really requires you to know yourself and i don't mean yeah like i said i, I don't mean just knowing what genre you want to write in it's really about that deep understanding of unpacking your experiences from the past, doing shadow work, knowing where your triggers are, knowing where some of the the source that the sources and the origins of your emotions, you know, who you are as a human being, what's your what are some of the big metaphors in your life? What are some of the messages in your life? What's some of the things you struggle with? What's this ongoing lesson that you're struggling with? And I feel like these are the things, like the things you know about yourself, the things you learn from yourself. These are the things that you're going to channel or you're going to project forward as a writer, as, as an artist. And as a writer, these are the stories that you're telling or that you want to tell. Because I personally don't really believe that you should write something that's outside of your experiences. But I don't mean that, I, I don't mean as a, as a discouraging way, like you should just never step out of your comfort zone. I don't mean that at all. But I just feel like the stories that are really meaningful, like the stories that you're meant to write, are stories that are a reflection of yourself. So I feel like if you write something for the sake of writing something different or for the sake of just writing something outside of your, um, you know, something just completely different from who you are as a person, I feel like that could be a good exercise, I guess, but I don't feel like there's going to be as much resonance because I personally believe that, you know, the stories that you write, the things that you create are an extension of yourself. It's you expanding, it's you expressing who you are, it's you sort of sharing your essence with the world. And to do that, you have to really dive deep into yourself and know yourself from inside and out. Because if you don't do that, how are you supposed to give a part of yourself, right? I feel like creating art is about giving a part of yourself or sharing a part of yourself with the world. You're sharing a piece of your worldview, you're sharing a piece of your you know, you're uh, like who you are as a person, like what you believe in, like the relationships you've gone through, the people you love, the things you love, the things you hated, the things that broken your heart or mended your heart. Those are the things that you share, like that are going to trickle out of you. They're, they're the things that are going to become part of what you create as an artist or as a writer. So I feel like to do that, you need to come from a really honest place. And that honest place can only be cultivated with you know, awareness and diligent work, like work, you know, working towards understanding yourself and always coming from that place of awareness and mindfulness. I don't know if this makes sense because I feel like if you don't know who you are, then how are you going to create, you know, how are you going to share yourself with the world? It's just, I feel like you're just sharing the idea of yourself and sometimes that could work, but I feel like most of the times it's not going to work and I feel like most of the time it's not going to give you that genuine satisfaction, that genuine flow, that flow that you're going to have when you're writing or when you're creating. Okay, so I feel like that's the first part about, you know, never uh, having creative block or writer's block is you should always know who you are as a person and if you're always coming from that genuine sense of self if you're always coming from that genuine sense of knowing and awareness like there's no way that you're going to be stuck because you can never stop being yourself i feel like sometimes your ego might want to tell you a different story right your ego might tell you like uh to kind of write something based on this idea of yourself or based on this based on this idea of who you are as a writer or who you are as an artist and I feel like that's just extra work because if you're doing that, if you're trying to uphold an ideal or an idea of who you are that's not really you or that's just like a like an awe version of you, then no wonder you're having blocks because it's just an extra struggle. It's kind of like your spirit, your creative self wants to go this way, but you're trying to make it go like in certain directions or you're trying to shape it in a certain way that's not true to its nature and of course you're going to have difficulties because you know you're blocking yourself from being who you are you know what i mean so i feel like that's honestly one of the most important things when it comes to creating it's just you have to be honest with yourself you have to come from that honest place okay so i would say that's the first thing and second thing i think has to do with stress and pro and procrastination and being productive so if you don't know productivity is one of my favorite topics to talk about just gonna drink some tea here mm. so good 
Okay, so when it comes to procrastination and productivity, so I think this also factors into your lifestyle and some of the other things you have to accomplish, you know, uh, practical concerns about life, like, yeah, like your health or the people you have to take care of, uh, chores that you have to do around the house and that kind of thing. So productivity has to do with sort of your overall performance in your life. And you can check out my other pro videos on productivity or you can check out my blog post about productivity, but I feel like I think the most important thing to take away here is like, uh, I think when you're trying to incorporate your, uh, or trying to kind of have cultivated creative practice or try to sort of integrate a creative practice into your life. Um, if you don't, if you don't already have, a, have an established creative practice that works for you, then you really, what you really have to do is just experiment and find something that works for you. I know sometimes like the big overwhelm or the big sort of that sense of dread when you think about like, oh, I haven't done the work count for today or I haven't done the, uh, you know, the amount of work that I've set out to do today or I haven't done enough or I haven't been producing stuff. So I feel like a lot of that is a big cluster fuck up <laughs> of just like your, you know, perfectionism, your expectations for yourself, other people's expectations for yourself, other, per other people's expectation of who you're supposed to be, who you're not supposed to be what productivity looks like to you and what you expect, you know, from yourself, you know, being productive and everything. So I feel like there's a lot of that. I think that takes time to unwind and productivity doesn't like, isn't just, doesn't just mean pumping out products, like producing products. A part of it is, is also about like taking a break and taking a, taking time off to recognize what your needs are and to, to sort of, experiment with different ways of being productive that speaks to you, that makes you happy, that makes you rock at life, and that makes you rock at your creative practice. So when it comes to productivity and pro procrastination, like there's so many things that I could talk about here, but when it, I feel like the most important thing when it comes to a creative practice is you need to understand that, um, like you need to understand that your lack of productivity or sort of like your, sense of lack of productivity doesn't define who you are as an artist or as a creator just because you're not putting down a work on for one day doesn't mean you're complete a complete failure as a writer or as an artist um you know your prog like your the physical sort of not having physical evidence of your work does not impact on who you are this doesn't impact on your identity as a writer or as an artist like it doesn't like it really doesn't it's just a reflection of I think maybe some of the other stress that you're going through in your life, it's just a reflection of like, maybe some of the things in your creative practice isn't working, uh, that isn't, like I said, it's just, it's not saying like you're a bad artist, it's just saying like you want to, you want to be maybe, you need to do some problem solving and just figure out where the jams are and then you just need to figure out how to fix those things and create a better flow when it comes to productive lifestyle and productive when it comes to your creative practice. So really, you know, it doesn't, it's it's not making stuff. I know that's such a big thing when it comes to, you know, having a creative practice is you want to be creating something. And when you were not, when you're not creating something, it just feels like the end of the world because, you know, I feel, I feel like an artist is of course defined by their art, right? When you don't have your art in front of you when you're not making stuff, like how can you call yourself an artist? I know that seems like a big, big thing like it seemed very tragic that you're trying so hard and you want your efforts to pay off you want the time and energy you spent in something and in the project to really pay off but when it doesn't it feels like a big failure it feels like this apocalyptic dawning of a moment where you just feel like you're completely failed or you completely just didn't do yourself justice or didn't do your project justice or you felt somebody's expectations of you or blah 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 whatever the point is it, it honestly it's like you just need to relax like it's not a reflection of who you are it's just a reflection of maybe some of the things in your practice have gone wrong like there's this sort of maybe you need to check your routines and you need to create a better routines for yourself and that's not a you know like that's not a criticism on you either it's just like i feel like Sometimes it's just we never really checked in with our productive practices or creative sort of routines and we never really figure out, like, oh, this is actually causing our stress or maybe you've changed, you know, maybe your sense of priorities changed, maybe your lifestyle has changed and what used to work for you 
doesn't work anymore. So you just kind of have to look into that, right? And yeah, like I said, there are so many things I could talk about procrastination and productivity and overwhelm. I'm planning to make another video about that. But for now, I think I just want to say that your lack of progress doesn't define you as an artist, okay? Like, you know, I think you should, like, if you're really lacking progress, if you really, you're really stuck on something, it's really not moving forward. I think instead of trying to push, and I think what needs to happen here is you need to do a big diagnostic sort of, um, a big look at your life and really just sit down with yourself, allow yourself, give yourself some space, allow yourself some time to look at what's went wrong, what's not working. Sometimes it's not about right or wrong, you know, it's just what's working and what's not working. And you just have to problem solve. You know, that's all that that's all there is. You really don't have to like put all the pressure on yourself. You know, you're human, we're all human. Like we just need to figure out bigger stuff out sometimes. You know, we need we need to figure out what works and we need to experiment. So yeah, don't beat yourself up if you're not making anything. You will, you know, if you're an artist, if you, if you know you're an artist, you have things to create, you have things to give. So don't doubt yourself because of that, okay? All right, so third point. Mm, the third thing I want to talk about is like, your artist's block, but in the form of resistance. So... I think this has to do with, I think a part of this is really doing shadow work. So if you don't know what shadow work is, it means like looking at some of the suppressed um, psychological tendencies or aspects of ourselves that we don't really like or that have been re rejected. So we sort of pushed it into our shadow, right? We pushed it, like shoved, shove it under the carpet so we don't have to look at it. But as a result, usually this creates pressure in our psyche, this creates pressure in our psychological being, right? Because when something that's part of you, when you just push it down, it's going to create a lot of tension. And this tension is going to explode in different ways. So for example, like, um, uh, just like a basic example, say you're deeply jealous of somebody uh, because they have the newest iPhone and then you're suppressing that jealousy because you feel like, well, I shouldn't be feeling jealous because that's that's not a good emotion to have so you push it down and shove it under a carpet but it comes out as anger and you get really mad at a person and you don't know why you always snap at that person and now that person always rubs you the wrong way and that's your shadow you know it's because you you push down a lot of junk in your into your shadow and as a result it's giving you like lots of tension it's sort of trying to seep through from the cracks and it's kind of coming out in different ways and it's pretty it's pretty unhealthy so that's why a good dose of shadow work now and then doesn't hurt and and but you have to be ready for that shit though like if you're ready to deep down and dive in and do some deep shadow work a lot of bad stuff well i want to say bad stuff but it's just like if you have never done it before and you suddenly decide to do it um as just feel like you have to be ready for that thing because it takes a lot of courage and energy to face that part of yourself that you don't want to face but anyway epic this epic on um, tangent so that's shadow work. Shadow work is about working with yourself, working with what's been repressed, working with the constructions in your psyche, you know, constructions being, oh, excuse me, constructions being like, uh, you know, things, um, things you have internalized that's not necessarily what you believe in, but it's just what society believes in, or it's sort of like you sort of um, have that perspective because maybe something negative or challenging happened to you and you never really truly resolved it. So I'm going to share with you a story, um, how sort of, how certain memories in childhood that has to do with writing really impacted me as a writer in my adulthood or in my adult life or adult creative practice. So when I was like 13 or 14 years old, I was taking writing classes, um, with a, with a teacher and she was really good. She taught me a lot of technical details. She really helped me improve my writing, you know, in terms of skills. Like I really, it, it really gave me a lot of arsenals, like tools when it comes to writing. So I really thanked for, for it. But at the same time, she was very controlling in her vision of me. Like I wanted to pursue fantasy literature, but she didn't really believe in fantasy literature. She thought it was um, 
complete junk because it wasn't real. So she encouraged me to pursue more literary stuff like feminist writing or political writing or the more, the deeper stuff, right, in her opinion. And I think that really took a toll on who I was as an artist because who I was and still am as an artist is I love fantasy. I love the genre of fantasy. I love the tropes of fantasy. It's a genre that speaks to me. I love exploring the images of fantasy. If you've gotten a reading from me then you know it's a big element. It's a big core part of what my readings are like. It's like fantastical imagery and insight and stuff. But when I was younger, that part of me was rejected and deeply, harshly criticized in some, uh, sometimes. And I just felt really rejected. Like there is always this big sense of rejection associated with writing fantasy literature. And it was because of that sense of rejection and criticism that I got as a kid when I was, when I was, when I was partaking in that writing class. And I didn't really know it at the time. I just thought, you know, I want to be the good student, right? I want to be the good student and please my teacher. I want to just kind of follow her vision. And it was like, it, it was really confusing to be honest because most of the time she was kind of rejected that part of me. But at the same time, sometimes she would sort of take my writing, you know, say like this scary ghost story that I, that I came up with. And then she would sort of take that and show it to other teachers and kind of take credit from my work. And this all this is all dawn on me like when I was an, when I was an adult by the way like this but at the time it just imagined like I was rejected for that part of me and at the same time I was also receiving a lot of confusing messages about what's good writing and what's not good writing so it was that I really cared that like just throughout the years I mean I think the reason why I never really sat through a novel like a fantasy novel that I want to complete was this fear of being rejected because as a kid I was deeply deeply rejected by my teacher who I uh, deeply deeply respected and you know looked up to at the time and then it was just like it was you know something I I wouldn't say necessarily consciously suppressed but it wasn't something that I understood because I, I was 13 years old I didn't know how to deal with that shit right I didn't know how to really understand that you know I don't have to I can still be who I am despite what other people say I didn't I didn't know that like I was really young and I didn't really have that self-confidence to really stand up for myself and sort of work through what I believe in and then sort of filter through what the other people are saying about my work I really took criticism seriously right so that really impacted me so and as an as an adult like throughout a huge sort of many years in my writing career I just was I was in love with fantasy literature. I feel like that part of me was never going to go away because it was just part of me. But at the same time, I was afraid of letting that part of me out. I would say, oh, I love writing, but then I would sit, I would sit there and try to write a short story about magic or about, you know, like in the, in, in the, in the theme with, with magic as a theme or something like that. But I could never really finish it because I was so scared that when I finished, I have to show it to somebody and then they're going to give me the same criticism and rejection that I got as a kid from that teacher. And that really made me afraid, I think. And that really made me want to sort of just push that self, push that side of me away. Because I remember when I was in university, I really want to pursue literary, like more literary theme stuff, like literary style writing. And I think partially that was because of the messages that I received from years of taking writing lessons with that teacher. And it was just really sad. I mean, but I think like it was really sad because I feel like I missed out like a lot of years where I could just be myself. But at the same time, I feel like I guess everything sort of, I think worked out like worked out in the end it was like without all those experiences without all the sort of conflicts and challenges placed upon my identity i could never really carve out the identity that i have today so it was all because of the challenges i went through that i could sort of really find myself and i could really have a strong sense of self now so yeah anyway so that's my story and the point of sharing that story is when it comes to criticism and perfectionism and a lot of the hang-ups that you have or may not know you have about writing that may be blocking you or conflicting you or maybe stopping you from being the best that you can be in your creative practice, a good place to look is your childhood and your past and your experiences with creativity, okay? Like, 
what you have experienced, some of the things you have internalized, maybe some of the initial, I think, especially in childhood or teenage years, like when you were younger, like especially, um, you know, like when you're like when you're younger, when you're more impressionable, like when you really didn't know how to deal with your feelings, you didn't have your adult confidence and this discernment. I think those are a good place to look. First of all, like that's the first place you should look is to look at your childhood because I feel like a lot of times we we uh, we when we go through things regarding to like that's due with our creativity and creatively express who we are as people. And I think some of the things we experience in the past they really leave a mark on us, and I think that affects the flow of creativity. Like when we are creating as adults, because we deeply deep down inside, we still remember maybe some of the rejection and criticism that we got from from the people around us or from our environment. So if you're a kid or even just like, you know, when you're a kid, when you're a teenager or when you were younger or maybe just you know, you know, sometime, sometime in the past, right? I feel like that's a good place to look because I feel like a lot of times we can't be who we are, we can't be who we are meant to be, we can't create the way we want to create is because when we were creating in the past, we sort of received feedback that discouraged us. And maybe at the time we didn't realize that was a form of dis discouragement or we didn't realize that was a form of um, even manipulation, right? We would sort of, that kind of short circuits are creative circuits, if you know what I mean. It's like, if you're programmed to go a straight, like into a straight line, but because of those experiences, every time you want to create something, it starts to do like that, like it, it starts to go like this. And it's because, and then it's not your fault, you know, because your essence is right here. Your essence is a straight line. Like, I feel like when we create our essence, we channel who we are. Like when we channel our core onto the page or into a canvas or onto a, into a camera or something, it's always going to be like a straight line because it's just you and yourself having a dialogue and figuring out what's going to come out. So I feel like that's always should, that should always be a straight line. But when it's not like that, when it's when all the different things in your life, stress, procrastination, productivity, personal crisis or external stress stuff, everything your previous previous experiences with creativity when all those things come together it sort of changes your path right it changes your it sort of creates distance between who you are what you want to express and sort of the physical form of what it is you're expressing like it creates distance and i feel like this is all coming down to like this is distill like the core messages of this video is the one thing that you can do for yourself to not have writer's block or creator's block or creative blocks or artistic block or whatever is you need to close that space between who you are and what you want to create. And how you can close that space is by doing shadow work, is by understanding who you are on a deeper level. It's about unpacking the junk and releasing this junk in your psyche. It's about creating the, you know, putting yourself in an optimal environment. It's about being the best version of yourself, making sure that you are functioning at the optimal level. And by that, I mean like you're, you know, make sure you're healthy, you're like, you're, you're energized, you're eating right, everything, right? You're making sure you're not stressed out. You're making sure that you have, to have all your house chores taken care of, right? You need to close that space. You need to close the distance between who you are and what it is that you want to create. That's the most important thing. And I feel like when, and that's, ta that takes a lot of work, you know, because it's not just like, okay, I'm just going to deal with my writer's block, but you're actually dealing with your whole person. Because what I deeply believe about creativity is that creativity isn't just a muscle that we use. Creativity is so intrinsically linked to our spiritual expression. It's linked to our sense of purpose. It's to sense, linked to a sen the sense of like our sense of who we are as people, what we are here for, how we can be of service. I feel like everything is interlinked. Like everything is interconnected in that way. So just thinking that creativity is a muscle, then you just have to train it. Which is true, by the way, practice makes perfect, but I feel like creativity isn't something so mechanistic. It's something that's organic. It's something that's really tied to who you are and what you have to offer. And then not having writer's block means not having a block 
in yourself, not having a block when it comes to being yourself in real life. Because like, if you're not, if you're just a zombie, you know, if you're just programmed by the, these ideas about who you are or who, who you ought to be or who others think you should be, then how can you create something that's genuine? How can you close in that distance? How can you really create from a genuine place when you're a zombie? You can't. That's my answer. And that's why you need to just work really work hard on yourself like that's the secret recipe to solving writer's block or creator's block you need to solve that block within yourself you need to like unblock yourself from all the restraints and limits and and constructions anything that's standing your way you need to close that distance between who you are and what you want to create and honestly that's what i believe like that's spiritual evolution right there that's creative evolution that's just metamorphosis in a nutshell like that's just something wonderful that you can do for yourself if you're not doing that for yourself already it's something you can you can you, sh you should be doing you should find that inspiration to become a better version of yourself you need to find inspiration to want to unblock all those things in your psyche so you can have a better better channel as an artist and as a writer as a creator as a painter photographer or whatever like you need to find that you need to close that gap you need to close that distance and that's really how you solve that's really how you can function at 70 80 percent all the time when you're writing or when you're creating or you're painting it's not having blocks in yourself and i feel like to do that will enable you it'll, it'll give you so much space it'll create so much space for you to to create something one it'll give you so much space to create something wonderful and i think you should totally do it be who you are unblock who you are stop like stop yourself from stopping yourself from being who you are that makes no sense all right guys so that's sort of like the three ish things um that i want to talk about when it comes to writer's block and honestly forgot if I announced that this was a list or not. Like I said, this was an impromptu video. I just decided to do it and I'm glad I did because a lot of good stuff came out of me. And I'm glad that I got to share that with you guys. My nose is kind of plugged because I actually teared up a little bit in the middle of the video. That's kind of my sign of like, I feel like when you're, when you have tears in your eyes, when you have that feeling of like you want to cry or you're just touched, I feel like that's a true communion with spirit at least. That's just kind of my indicator or how I interpret it. Or of course, sometimes you're just allergic, but <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad I got to share that with you. If you're a creator, if you're, art, if you're an artist, if you're a writer, I hope this has inspired you and I hope that you will continue to create awesome things for yourself and for others and make the world a better place. I don't know. Yeah. And until next time, be the hero of your own story. And if you want to check out some of my stuff on productivity, there are some videos on my channel and there's also an ongoing productivity series on my blog. So make sure you check that out. And it's basically, I take each and every card from the major arcana and I talk about productivity in that context. In the context of that, of that archetype. So it's ongoing. Follow my blog. Lots of good stuff on my blog too if you want to find out lifestyle productivity things. Okay, so until next time, be to hear your own story. And I have a little new add-on in, in addition to be the hero of your own story. Be the hero of your own story. And at the same time, I see you. You're awesome. And don't forget, don't ever forget that you are your chosen one. You are your knight in shiny armor or you are your own dragon. Ferocious dragon steed, you are your own hero. You are the hero of your own story. So stay awesome. Bye.